Lord, we come to you right now to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for being that source of inspiration for us, giving us something to aspire to, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for being here to walk with us during our troubled times, Lord. Lord, I ask you to create a, in me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit within me, Lord. Lord, I just love you, and I praise your holy name by giving the highest praise of hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And it's in Jesus' name that I thank you, Lord. Amen. I should to walk the path that's right to do the things you would give me a clean heart and I will serve you give me a clean heart to lose a double mind Believe me when you tell me everything will be just fine. Just lay your hands on me, Lord, and I will be brand new. Cause I am worshiping your great and holy name. I'm determined to have a life with no chains give me a clean heart and I will serve you give me a clean heart a better one I pray to stay on the path you've chosen and stick with it all the way just lay your hands on me, Lord, and I will be brand new. Cause I am coming out to you for a strength exchange. I would gladly take your joy for my weakness. Give me a clean. a clean heart to lose a double mind believe you when you tell me everything will be just fine just lay your hands on me Lord and I will be brand new give me a clean heart I'm coming now to you to keep my heart from fainting. This is all I know to do. Just lay your hands on me, Lord, and I will be brand new, 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 new. Cause I am worshiping your great and I'm determined to live life with no chains. Give me a clean heart and I will serve you. Give me a clean heart and I will serve I am worshiping your great and holy name. I'm determined to live life with no chance. 
chains Give me a clean heart And I will serve you, 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 you And I am calling out to you For a strength exchange I will gladly take your joy For my weakness Give me a clean Give me a clean heart and I will serve you. Nobody. Good morning, Sister Rwanda. Good morning, Shiloh Baptist Church guests and friends. Welcome to the fourth Sunday in February. Good morning, Reverend Stansel. Good morning, Shiloh guests, visitors, and friends. Yes, we have came to the fourth Sunday in February. And I don't know about you, but God is blessing me to see a fourth Sunday in 2022 again. Amen, amen, and amen. Join us in the live chat as we say greetings to our pastor, our officers, and other Shiloh disciples. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel right there. Don't forget to join us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Do you stand in need of spiritual support or counsel or guidance? Isn't it good to know that God has given us a resource to help us? on this journey. He's given us his word and he's given us brothers and sisters in Christ to stand with us in prayer. So if you stand in need of a prayer request or a spiritual need or counsel, put your email address and your your prayer request in our live and a deacon or minister will reach out to you. Or if you prefer, we always tell you, you can go right to our website and complete our spiritual support form, the tool that we use to help you when you stand in need of spiritual guidance or support or counsel. It's Children's Church Sunday at 1015. Minister Brown will be on our team's platform Awake the babies and get them ready to hear about the good news of Jesus. And now we will have prayer, scripture, weekly announcements, and an inspirational message. Let us pray. Hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power unto you, our Lord, our God. All honor, all worship is to you. We confess our sins, Father, as we stand here in your holy place, asking for your forgiveness. And we want to thank you for the new mercies you give us every day. We thank you for the mercies you've given us in the past and what the mercies will be for the future. Thank you, Father God. Father, we ask that you bless all, everyone, the leaders of our countries, the leaders of our churches, the leaders in our institutions, our educational institutions. We all, Father God, need your blessings. Help us, Father. Help us to have the hearts and the minds and the soul that you would have us to have. Let us follow and walk with you, Jesus. Not in front of you, but behind you, so that we know where you lead us is where we should go. We ask the blessings for the sick, the shut-in, those who think that their life is not worth anything and are thinking of giving it up, be with them and call their names loudly. Bless this service. Bless the pastor, B. Lewis Carlton, and all those who are here in this virtual as well as on their uh, computers. Bless them all, Father. They all stand in need of what only you know. So we're just asking that you bless them, keep them, lead them, guide them. We ask this, Father, in Jesus' name, and we also ask that you bless all these children. Bless them, keep them healthy. 
that they don't have to get the shot, and if they do, make it blessed anointed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. From the King James Version, verses 1 through 6, and it reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Thou and hoes shall encamp against me. My heart shall not fear, though war shall rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing I have desire of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, and he shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Here's what's happening this week at Shiloh Baptist Church of Landover. Circle 3 and the Kitchen and Foreign Mission Ministries will be collecting items for Community Crisis Services Incorporated. CCSI has recently acquired the organizations formerly known as Warm Nights Homeless Shelter and the Family Crisis Center and provides food and shelter for men, women, and children. For the month of March, Shiloh will collect a wide range of items to meet this need. A full list of items needed can be found on our Shiloh website at shilohbc.org forward slash outreach. You may drop off your donations at the church each Saturday in March between the hours of 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Thank you for your support. Please contact outreach at shilohbc.org if you have questions. Bible study and midweek services both have returned. Please join us for Bible study at 7 p.m. on Microsoft Teams. Then join us at 8 p.m. for midweek service on our Shiloh Baptist Church YouTube channel. Visit our website, shilohbc.org, to get connected. Attention all teenagers between 13 and 18 years old. Youth Bible study has resumed as of Wednesday, February 2nd at 7 p.m. Topics will include learning the books of the Bible, Bible prophecy, memorizing scripture, and discovering what the Bible means to you. You don't want to miss this time of increasing your knowledge and spiritual growth. The link to join is on the screen. If you have questions, contact youth at shilohbc.org. Shiloh has designated Wednesday as a day of prayer, fasting, and testimony. Please join us at 4 a.m. and again at noon for our National Day of Prayer. God, through prayer, opens eyes, changes hearts, heals wounds, and grants wisdom. Join us on Wednesday at 4 a.m. for the Shiloh Prayer Call and Wednesday at 12 noon on the National Prayer Line. Family, as we open our week, think on these two thoughts. First, appreciate all blessings in your life and take none for granted. Second, you can't change what's going on around you until you start changing what's going on within you. Have a blessed week, Shiloh. Good morning. The theme for Black History Month observance for 2022 is Black Health and Wellness. Black History Month first originated as part of an initiative by writer and educator, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who launched Negro History Week in 1926. Woodson proclaimed, Negro History Week should always occur the second week of February, between the birthdays of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. Since 1976, 
every American president has proclaimed February as Black History Month. Today, other countries such as Canada and the United Kingdom also devote an entire month to celebrating Black history. No history of the United States of America can be said to reflect the true story of America. However, that does not include the contributions made by people of color. Even though legalized slavery and segregation marred much of the first two centuries of the American story, African Americans overcame barriers of poverty, racial prejudice, inequality, and in many cases, brutal suppression in order to add to the political, artistic, athletic, scientific, and all aspects of growth of America as a country. This year's theme, Black Health and Wellness, takes a look at how American healthcare has often underserved the African-American community. Even in good times, during the Jim Crow era, whites-only hospitals were commonplace throughout the South. Black medical facilities were often understaffed, unfunded, or simply non-existent. This stark reality gave credence to the saying, when white folks catch a cold, black folks get pneumonia. In closing, I recite Romans 8.18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. This has been a moment of reflection in Black history. Thank you. It's that time, Shiloh. It is offering time. Shiloh, let us recite together our consecration of tithes and offerings. Dear Father, may thy love abound toward us as we now bring to thine altar this our gift. Help us that we may not give our monies as a necessity, nor grudgingly, knowing that God loves a cheerful giver. We ask thy blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. View our full ways of giving on your screen. You can visit our website at shilohbc.org forward slash give. You can send a text to the number on the screen. You can mail your gifts to the address on the screen. At that selected date, at that selected time, stop by the church to drop off your love offering. You can also give on your F1 Go app. And if you have any questions or concerns about your offerings and your givings, Email treasurer at shilohbc.org. Listen, we have an amazing, exciting word to share with you. Pastor is doing another full part series. Reverend Sansu, I am super excited. So listen, I want you guys to join us next Sunday as Pastor will bring us the word. This is the real test part one. Amen. And the points for next Sunday will be point number one. Can you worship God when the four walls of the church is not available? Whew. Point number two, when no one is watching, can you worship God? And point number three, remember, with or without the four walls, God is still watching. Thank you, Pastor, for that word. I'm looking forward to hearing what thus saith the Lord. Did I say it was a four-part series? So this is part one of four? Okay. Join us next Sunday. Now we will have a music selection by our music ministry and the preach word by our pastor, Reverend B. Lewis Collison. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey.
obey when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart i will plead and my answer will be yes lord yes i'll say yes lord yes to your will and to your way i'll say yes lord yes i will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart i will plead and my answer will be yes lord yes yes lord yes lord from the bottom of my heart to the depth of my soul yes lord completely yes my soul says yes yes lord yes lord from the bottom of my heart to the depth of my soul yes lord completely yes my soul says yes my soul says yes my Says, yeah. Hello, my brothers and my sisters. God bless you and let heaven continue to smile upon you. The Lord is so good. He has brought us again and again. He has kept us again and again. And for that, I say thank you, Lord. My brothers, my sisters, I want to invite your attention to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. 1 Corinthians, 13th chapter, beginning at verse 1, the NIV version. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now for yet another Sunday, another day, another opportunity to hear from heaven. Lord, I pray now that you would bless your humble servant. You have spoken to me, now speak through me and speak for me that we all might hear from you. Lord, let this word heal, let it help, let it bless, and Lord, let it encourage. Come Holy Spirit and have your way in our lives even now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. 1 Corinthians 13, beginning at verse 1, the NIV. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding dung or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can phantom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all my proceeds to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, Love is kind. 
It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it gives no record, it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hope, always preserve. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part then. I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brothers, my sisters, I want to talk with you for a few moments from this text using as a message, don't let the opportunity to love pass you by. Don't let the opportunity to love pass you by. In this life, we have so many reasons that we can create or others create for us not to trust, not to love, not to care, and the list goes on. But I've come by because the Lord has sent me to say, don't let the opportunity to love pass you by. The first point of this message today is nothing can substitute for love. Nothing can substitute for love. In other words, love is the real deal and nothing can replace love. Listen, if you would, verses 1 through 3. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding dung or a clanging cymbal. The key here is to understand that there are a whole lot of things we can touch, we can see, we can do, a whole lot of great things we can put claim to, 
a whole lot of great titles man can give to us. But if we do not have love, we are missing the whole point. We are missing what it really takes to function. We are missing what God expects us to give one to the other, love. The word says here, I am only a resounding dung or a clanging cymbal. In other words, there is nothing to my life except me making some noise and people making noise with my life. In other words, love has to accompany you in all that you do, in all that you say. Love has to be in your presence. If I have the gift of prophecy and can phantom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, Paul says here to the church at Corinth, I am nothing. Again, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, we cannot substitute love with anything else. Yes, you can do good deeds. Yes, you can give your finances. Yes, you can give the shirt off of your back. But if love does not accompany your behavior, your actions, you have failed that which God expects of you and I. You see, my brothers and sisters, love overrides a whole lot of things. I said on the onset of this month that love has the power to overcome everything, all things. And sometimes because we refuse to allow the love of God that's in us to keep us company, and we refuse, therefore, to share that love, we are only making a lot of dust and accomplishing nothing in the sight of God. If I give all my possessions, all of my proceeds, all that I have to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. I often say that I don't want to live in this hardship of earth living and this hellified life that life can give to us from time to time and then do all that I am attempting to do and wind up not receiving a home in heaven, a crown of righteousness. You see, my brothers and sisters, it's time for us to put the devil on the run and let the devil know that he cannot have your joy, he cannot have your peace, he cannot have this precious love that God has given to you. He cannot have the kindness 
that God has given to your heart. You have to, we have to, I have to, you have to take back what the devil stole from us. There are people who once, once were filled with joy, filled with peace, filled with happiness, and then someone broke their hearts. Someone lied on them. Someone cheated on them. Someone stole from them. And out of the actions of evil carried out by people, they have lost their joy, they lost their peace, they have lost the love, they have lost their kindness. I am here to say to you, the devil is a liar and the truth is not in him. You have to get your joy back, you have to get your peace back, you have to get your kindness back, you have to get the love of God back into your heart. And these are the traits that you have to share with everyone else, with one another. But you first have to reclaim them in your life. You have to get tired of being sad, tired of being wounded, tired of being hurt, tired of being tired of all of the negatives and you have to call on the name of the Lord and declare that you want peace, kindness, joy, and God's love back into your life and you have to take that back. You have to look at who you surround yourself with and who surrounds you and you have to let life know that God did not send you here to be sorrowful all the days of your life. Let that season pass and you reclaim what belongs to you. Because no matter what else you do, just remember, nothing can substitute for love. Point two. In this sermon, don't let the opportunity to love pass you by. Point two, love does amazing things. Love does amazing things. In verse four and five, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it does not, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily anger. It keeps no record of wrongs. That's amazing. And love does all of that and more. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. Wow. If we can just take those three and place them in the center of the church and in the lives of those who make up the church. What a beautiful place we would be worshiping in. It does not boast. It is not proud. It doesn't boast about what it does because she knows that it is the Lord who is doing the work and we are just participants. It is not proud because we realize that it is God who has ownership of it all. 
It is not, it does not dishonor others. It finds the good in people. Love finds the positive in people. Love finds ways of encouraging people. Love, love, love lifts people up. It is not self-seeking. It does not go after something or doing kingdom work or doing church work because it wants to lift itself up. It does it because it is the work of the Lord and the work of the kingdom. It is not easily anger. My brothers, my sister, it doesn't get puffed up so quickly until no one wants to be around her. Love, it keeps no record of wrongs. So love does not remind you every time you turn around. Love does not remind you of what you did wrong. Love does not remind you of where you used to be. Love does not remind you of what you used to do, what you used to drink, what you used to use, where you used to go. Love does not, does not bring up your wrong behavior. Love does amazing things. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Yes, hear the word now. Love does not delight in evil. Let me pause there long enough to say it. Love does not gossip. Love does not get on the telephone and talk bad about people or join in with a conversation that is negative about people, but rather love is there to encourage and to build up their brothers and sisters. The next time that you have the opportunity to tear someone down, I dare you to build them up. I, I, I challenge you the next time someone calls you with negative reports about your brother or your sister, I charge you and I dare you to say to that person, we just don't do that. God will not have us to tear our brother, our sister down. Yes, I understand the behavior was ungodly, but he is still a child of God. She is still a child of God, and therefore we have to carry that person. Let us pray for the well-being of our brother or our sister. It always protects. That's what that in that conversation, I'm protecting that brother, that sister's reputation. I'm protecting their name by saying, we are not going to talk this negative stuff about our brother or our sister, but rather we are going to pray for them. Uh, always trust. I'm going to always trust God for my brother, for my sister. Always hope. I'm going to always hope for the best for your life. Regardless of how you treat me, I'm going to hope for the best for your life. Regardless of how he treats you, you always hope for his best or her best. That's what love does, always preserves. Always keep the good for our brother, for our sister in mind and in heart. Always pre preserve the goodness of the Lord in our lives, always. That's what love does. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
and out of all of this that love does, some of us are allowing love to pass us by. That I came by today to remind us and to say to some, don't let the opportunity to love pass you by. Because if you allow the opportunity to love to pass you by, you are allowing a life of experience to pass your life. Because in loving each other, in loving one another, what you're really doing, you're exercising the gift and gifts of God that God has entrusted to this earthland vessel. God has given you the, the capacity to love. God has given you the capacity to love and to always love. And yet some are allowing the opportunity to love to pass them by. Point three, when everything else fails, love is found standing. When everything else fails, love is found standing. Love never fails, verse 8. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. When everything else fails, love is found standing. My dear brother, my dear sister, know without a shadow of a doubt that love carries so much of power until when we use love to interact with people, it can heal the deepest wound in a person's life. It can give hope to the hopeless. It can take a despaired heart and bring gladness to them. It could take whatever situation is before her, she can take it and cover it and make it a better situation. That's what love does. Love is not envy or jealous, but love is giving and caring. Verse 9, for we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. It's almost like when there's a little light in the room, you will always have a shadow to your right or to left, depending on the direction of the light. But when the light is brighter in the room, the light burns out the shadow, what I used to see in part, now I only see it as it is in the whole. And my brothers and my sisters, as Paul is trying to help the church at Corinth to understand that we cannot continue to overlook that God has given us has given us love to see us through every situation. You say he hurt you, you said she disappointed you, but love can cover all of that. This I declare to you. And here in verse 11, a very familiar 
readings. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away, I put the ways of childhood behind me. Now, this may sound pretty harsh, but the truth will always stand. I wonder how many of us being a man or being a woman today have truly put away our childlike behavior. When we don't like something, we, we take up our marbles and, and we go home. When it doesn't go our way, we pout, we stump our feet, and we leave the building. When we cannot have it our way, we just quit, hoping that our quitting will force people to see it our way. That is childlike behavior. And no one, no grown man, no grown woman wants to hear someone say, you are acting like a child. But I want you to be honest with yourself and see whether or not your behavior is that of a man or woman versus it remaining as a boy or girl. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For now, in verse 12, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. So Paul is simply saying, none of us have the whole picture. All that we can see, all that we can know is still in part. Some of us think that because we are this denomination or that denomination, that we got the whole picture. Well, I'm here to tell you, you only see in part. You only have peace of the whole. In all different denominations, you only have peace of the whole. And that's bring about all kinds of, of disturbance between denominations. We're all Christians, but we fight about this, we fight about that. But can I tell you, I don't care what your denomination is, you only have peace a part of the whole. And Paul says it's like a reflection in a mirror. That's what you see. That's what you have. But one day, we're going to see face to face and know, and, and now we know in part that which we see, that which we have, it's only part of the whole. He said, now I know in part, then shall I know fully, even as I am fully known. You see, my brother, my sister, we only have a part of the whole. And instead of us behaving as though we got the whole gammon, we got the whole thing, we got this thing sewed up, we ought to realize that only God has the whole picture. Only God has the whole picture. And, the, and those who have gone on to be with him, they no longer see a reflection in the mirror. They no longer see in part and hear in part and know in part, but they now see themselves as they are seen 
fully by God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Paul concludes this matter here in this 13th verse. And now these three remains. Faith, hope, and love. He brought us from verse 1 through 12, explaining how we could be great at this, great at that, do these great miracles, prophesize, speak in tongues, he talks about how we can give our proceeds, how we can give even our bodies. But if we don't have love, we have nothing. My brother, my sister, faith, hope, and love. He talks about how you can have faith to move mountains. You can hope in many things and hope great things, but love, love is the greatest of these. But the greatest of these is love. And my brother, my sister, I pray that today that you will hear that love trumps it all. That you would hear that love will always stand regardless what else fails. Yes, don't let the opportunity to love pass you by. Let hatred be gone, let animosity, let all of those things that keeps us from loving, let it be of our past and take on the opportunity to love. And when you give love, I promise you this thing, love will come back to you. Nothing can substitute love. Nothing can substitute for love. Love does amazing things. When everything else fails, love is found standing. God bless you. Let heaven continue to smile upon you. And whatever you do, do not let the opportunity to love pass you by. When you can do good, do good. When you can give someone a smile, give them a smile. Give a hug when it's, when it's possible. Give an encouraging word. Give, speak, hope, and prosperity in each other's lives. God bless you. Let heaven smile upon you. Whatever you do, don't allow the opportunity to love pass you by. God bless you. Let heaven continue to smile upon you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now for this word. We thank you, God, for the writings of Paul. We thank you, God, for your inspir inspiring his writing and giving us a word that we can stand on and we can walk with. And this love can always radiate through us that others might know that God is real. That we can smile at someone and give them hope for tomorrow. We can love one another and bless their lives forever. Oh God, I pray that you would help us, help us, Lord, to love one another. 
And let us not try to exchange love with gifts and love with this thing and that thing, but let us always go to the meat of life, and that is love. Bless us and those whose heart, uh, hearts are wounded. I pray, Lord, you will heal them now and remind them of love. In Jesus' name, I pray thee. And now, Lord, I pray for those who are unsaved. I pray that you will bless them. And I pray that you, the unsaved, would repeat these words after me. Lord, thank you for this word. Lord, I've been angry because I've been disappointed. Lord, I've been wounded. Lord, I've been lied on and I have been betrayed. But Lord, after hearing this word, I want to get my life together. Therefore, I confess that Jesus is my Savior and my Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Now, Lord, your word says, and I shall be saved. Help me, Lord. Help me to get in touch with this ministry and and get in touch with someone who will help me to grow to maturity in the Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And Father, I thank you for healing the sick, comforting those who are bereaved. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, my brother, my sisters. I pray that this message will help you to come out of the dungeons of life and let love so shine that all will know that you are a child of the King. You be blessed and let the blessings of the Lord Continue, continue to reign in your life until Wednesday and until next Sunday. God bless you. What a word, what a word Pastor told us today. And all this month of this love giving month, don't let the opportunity to love pass you by. The pastor had amazing points this morning. Point number one, nothing can substitute for love. Point number two, love does amazing things. And point number three, when everything else fails, love is found standing. Thank you, Pastor, for just keeping us going during this month of love and reminding us of God's great love for us and our love toward our brothers and sisters. Amen. Join us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to be reminded of the sermon topic today, scriptures, and our weekly announcement. Join us Wednesday night when we'll come back together to get fueled up to run on the rest of the week. We look forward to having you. God bless you and have a wonderful week. See you next Sunday. See you Wednesday, Shiloh. Thank you for joining us today. We pray you have been blessed by the word of God from his messenger, Pastor B. Lewis Colleton. Please share this message with your family and friends. Our motto at Shiloh is more prayer, more power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. Remember to stay prayed up so you can have strength at all times. Now, you have the opportunity to bless this preacher and this church with your offerings. Just go to shilohbc.org forward slash give or send a text to the number on the screen. Or you can mail your offering into the church or stop by the church to drop it off. Just remember, God loves a cheerful giver. Join us each Sunday for Sunday school and Sunday worship service. Here at Shiloh, we are a Bible teaching, Bible preaching church with a focus on saving souls. 
God's word tells us in Psalms 105, verse 4, to seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face forevermore. Until we meet again, always be blessed.